this is definitely a case where the old saying rings true. Buy once, cry once. Uh, case in point, I'm currently redoing all the piping on my air compressors because I didn't buy the proper material the first time. Now, if you start researching what to use on your project, you're going to find recommendations ranging from every kind of pipe imaginable online. A quick search will reveal everything from PVC to black iron pipe, which we've already said was a bad idea, galvanized pipe, copper, and literally any kind of pipe you can imagine. What we've decided to go with on this project is a combination of rubber flex hose, the rapid air system, and galvanized pipe. If you're going to use any kind of hard pipe whatsoever, the only recommendations I can give is for copper or galvanized pipe. Go ahead and delete from your thought process any kind of inkling to use PVC, CPVC. Uh, now I'm not saying this stuff doesn't work. Obviously it can maintain pressure and send it to a particular point of exit. What you want to and what I want to probably accomplish here is the value for money. If we're going to go out and spend all this time and all this money, obviously we want the cheapest thing we can get to get the job done. The question then becomes, when are we going to have to replace what we just did? In my situation here, uh, I'm doing it for various reasons, but mainly to entertain you and provide good quality education on do-it-yourself shop experiences. Now, as you can see, we've got an assortment of galvanized pipe fittings, elbows, uh, nipples, tees, ball valves, um, and everything in between. I made a long list and I got about what I believe is two to three times as much fittings as I'm going to actually need to route the pipe the way I intend. However, buying more than you need also prevents you running back and forth between the home improvement store and your home or your shop uh, and actually getting the project completed without missing the one fitting. Which reminds me, I've gotta go back and pick up another one of these. This is a union. I'm gonna need one more. I only got two, I'm gonna need three. So it just goes to show you, make a list, you check it twice and try as you might, still gonna be running back and forth when you're shopping the hardware store. Now as you can see here, everything is galvanized pipe. Uh, it's not black iron or just regular cast pipe. Uh, the reason being is because of the moisture content uh, and everything running inside the pipes, it, it will eventually corrode. And I'm not saying I need to be in this shop for the next 40 or 50 years uh, without replacing the air supply pipe. However, I'd like it to last longer than the black pipe did on the compressed air dryer. We're going to go with galvanized. It's the only thing I recommend if you're going to use hard pipe other than copper. Copper is a little bit more volatile when it comes to pricing. So I priced everything up in galvanized. That's what we bought. Obviously, the um, ball valves are brass. Again, for the non-corroding and non-rusting property. We're going to be sealing all this stuff up with Teflon. And this is just regular gray Teflon tape. It's a little bit thicker than the white stuff you would buy in the uh, hardware store. It's a little bit more expensive than the uh, cheap dollar white Teflon stuff, but it actually works a little bit better too. I'm using T plus two pipe thread sealant. Uh, I saw an instructional video on the system that I intend to install and it recommended using a combination of Teflon thread tape along with pipe sealant. I've never heard of that before and I've never done that before. So, um, however, it's recommended by the manufacturer, so we're gonna do it the recommended way. Now this video series is going to be how to properly plumb your air compressor. We're gonna do a, a shop line routing, make a bunch of drops for your air lines, air hoses, hose reels, and your air tools. This is all going to be a little bit instructional and hopefully a little bit informational for you about the common mistakes or misconceptions. Everybody on the internet has an opinion of the proper way to do it, and this is my opinion. I can't recommend any other way because this is how I'm doing it, so it's gotta be right, right? One of the most often overlooked issues is how to connect the compressor to the hard pipe. We're gonna be using a flexible line. Now this is just NPT threaded on both ends. One end has a male fixed end, that's a three quarter inch NPT. The other side has a female swivel. This makes it possible to connect to the hard pipe without having to put in another union. The reason you want to have a flexible line between your tank and the hard pipe is to prevent unnecessary vibration from transferring through the rest of your system. It's a real simple solution and one that is often overlooked in most home shop installations. 
All right, that's enough talking about boring galvanized pipe. Let's get on to the meat and potatoes of what this installation is gonna involve. I gotta be honest, guys. When I first saw everybody, their mother and brother, installing these in their home shops and or garages, I didn't understand the hype. I didn't fully appreciate what the system allows you to do and the efficiency it gives you for the do-it-yourself installer. One of the biggest complaints that most people have when installing an air piping system throughout their shop or garage is the amount of time it takes to put all those galvanized fittings together and then the inevitable leaks that happen after the fact. This system prevents a lot of that from happening in their, I'm sure, patented compression fitting style hose. This is the MaxLine Rapid Air System 3 quarter inch master kit. We're going to be running the entire shop in this and we have two of them to install. The only reason I got two of these is because, again, we have a lot of square footage to cover and the amount of outlets and the length of run needed, I needed around 200 feet of piping. I could have bought a master kit that was 300 feet long. I didn't think I needed that much pipe and it doesn't come with any more drop or outlets, which are these guys in the kit other than what comes here. Each one of these kits come with 100 feet of three quarter inch tubing, three outlets, which are these. They come with two T's that allow you to create the run to create the drop. They come with one three quarter inch male national pipe thread NPT straight fittings. And then they come with 20 clips in a deeper and cutting tool. We'll go over all that a little bit later once we open the kits. Now, this is the typical setup that you're gonna have. You're gonna have your air compressor, your flex line, and then running into your first regulator and or filter trap. One of the things that gets overlooked quite often is the distance from your compressor to that filter trap. It needs to be a minimum of 25 feet and all the way up to 50 feet of the same size piping or larger that you intend to run in this layout. In this instance, we're gonna be running three quarter inch pipe all the way from the compressor, the ball valves and everything, at least 25 feet before we ever make it to our first regulator. We've got a system coming in the mail in a couple days that's uh, a regulator, a filter. In our instance, we're gonna be running a five micron filter, backing that up in sequence with a 0.01 micron filter to remove any additional moisture and oil from the line. And if that's not enough, we're gonna have a desiccant air dryer prior to going into our refrigerated air dryer. Let's talk about what the kit comes with. It comes with a deburring tool, and this tool takes care of all the pipe that MaxLine offers, everything from half inch, three quarter, all the way up to one inch. And it just deburrs the inside of the pipe so where there's no jagged edges and this thing seals. We do have mounting clips, a hole in the center that allows you to screw it to wood, masonry, or whatever other object you're affixing it to, and then they have these adjoining ears on them as well. I don't know that I'll be using this feature, but it's nice to actually put some thought into making a simple clip. Here we have the outlets. In this particular kit, there are three outlets in their multi-piece assembly. They come with three brass plugs, three water drains, three hose connections and three outlet blocks. Now the hose connections, it should be important to note that while it's three quarter on the hose side, it's only half inch MPT on this side. That allows it to connect to this outlet block, which has three half inch holes. Depending on how you're using this assembly, you can mount it flush mount to a wall and have the hose come in from the back to where it's all hidden behind the wall. That's not how we're gonna use it in my particular application. In mine, we're gonna come in from the top. We're gonna to put the brass plug in the back. And then we're gonna have our quick disconnect attached here in the front. Again, these are all half inch fittings, except for the bottom, which is a 3 8 I believe. What this allows for in this configuration is as the pipe comes down, the water, if there is any left in the system, condenses in the bottom and it allows you to drain it periodically. The kit itself comes with two equal tees. These are three quarter inch in every side. And, uh, the main run of the pipe coming in one side and out the other and allow you to create that drop and go to the outlet. And here we have the same type of male fitting except this one is three quarter inch NPT and this one is half. The half inch go to the outlet blocks and the three quarter attaches to your system if you need it. It's meant to attach the hose to whatever kind of system you're putting in place, whether it be a, a filter or a 
dryer unit or what have you. Last but not least, we have the cutters. This is what you use to actually cut the pipe. It's your typical, it's your typical pipe cutter. One thing to notice about this is it's V'd um, and it feels a lot sharper than your standard PVC cutters. Last but not least, we have some O-rings, just some spare O-rings. It comes with four spare O-rings. And these are the same O-rings that would be on any side of the actual pipe side of your fittings. So it's nice of them to include spare parts from the get-go. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's uh, an overview of the actual kit, uh, what we're going to be doing with it, and how it's going to go together. I'm on a time crunch, so we're running out of daylight and I'm on a limited schedule. I gotta get busy ripping all this crap behind me out.